Last time we worked on building the roof together, getting the inlet made, and the collector, and with all of that done we can start looking at joining it onto the car at these four points and putting in the side panel of bodywork that goes around and wraps into the rest of the body. So this should be a really good episode and with some really big changes coming to the way the car looks. Now, the reason we didn't do it is because we have to try and get the back edge of the uh, roof structure down onto the firewall that obviously comes up from the engine to around about here. Now I didn't know exactly how I was going to do that but I know it has to clear the roll cage which obviously comes up through the back here through these two little divots in the back so this fits on nicely over the top. It comes up and then you've got the main roll cage tube across here, which is why this had to be pushed so far out and so close to the back panel of the, or in fact the front panel of the air collector. And that gave us a problem because we can't just pop rivets straight through this. I mean, we could if we got close enough, but it's not going to give you a very deep pop rivet and it's probably not going to hold where it's less than an eighth of an inch just across the back of here. So we're going to extend this down to make our lives a little bit easier and add this plate onto the top. So this will go in between the two knockout holes uh, for the uh, roll cage to go through. That will weld on and bring it down low enough that we can attach something else to, because ideally along here, if we're putting a window in, we need either a rubber trim or some sort of seal that will come around and fit into this gap. Now down the sides, obviously, we can't do it all the way across because we've got the roll cage coming through. So I've made these side fillet pieces which fit in on the edges like that. These just plug weld onto the bottom through there and they'll seam weld down onto the inside edge of this panel, just really, really carefully going down and spotting it as we go so we don't distort anything too much on the outside. We've got the three panels onto the roof now, put it back in. I've had to trim up a very slight bit off this side in order to get it to drop down nicely and it's really nice and close up against the cage, so that's definitely a win there. Unfortunately, the centre one's come out a little bit short. Not entirely sure why it's gone like that, but also when I've put it in, sitting in exactly the same four spots as it was around the pen marks, there's these big holes above the cage stays that go down to the rear suspension turrets. And I'm not entirely sure how that's happened. With those like that, I actually didn't need to take this chunk out. So that's going to be something we need to deal with uh, when we come to sort of close up that section properly. In the same vein, these side pieces don't actually come out sideways to the, where the panels are going to go as far as I would have liked. I have definitely made a, a miscalculation there. So I'm going to chop these off at the same height as the centre panel. And that way I can just put something else in. It'll be a single piece that goes from the outside edge all the way across to the window or whatever we end up putting in the back here. One way or another, we're definitely further on and we can actually look at attaching the roof. While I'm waiting for some of the roof panels to cool down so I can do a little bit more work on them, after welding, I'm going to start attaching this panel onto the back of the car. Now this is going to fit right the way over the last piece all the way down to this front bar which is going to be a separate piece because I can't quite get sheet metal long enough at the moment to go all the way down but that's not really a problem. It's actually more beneficial that I put something slightly thicker on here. This is where you sit to get in and out of the car. So this piece is going to get welded on exactly as it is now all the way across the back to join into the piece of the rear arch which is already on and all the way along this inside edge here. Then I'm going to start working out how big this piece needs to be, folding it over and getting it in exactly the right place because I don't want any distortion or anything like that that's going to cause my measurements to be out of whack. I really need this to be right and it's a three-dimensional plane as it comes across so it's a little bit tricky to measure while it's moving around. So I'm going to start welding this in and then cut it to size. Now something that's been plaguing me for quite some time is these air intakes. We were going to 3D print a duct which basically went from this plane all the way through to the intercooler and they're kind of like that, one's twisted, slightly off axis. It's not going to work because the geometry to do that is really, really difficult. Who knew? 
So instead, I've added in these extra two pieces of plate here to get a nice transition out of this section, which comes in from the, the side of the car in this sort of like air duct in the, the scoop that comes in. And the outside section is probably going to be aluminium. I don't think that needs to be steel, but the, st the piece on the bottom of this side does need to be steel to get that seamless transition all the way in, in a sensible fashion. And the piece on the bottom really needs to be a trough so that any water that gets into here is carried through and goes all the way through out the other side towards the engine so it doesn't sit in between the framework on top of the floor because although the floor is epoxy coated wood it is still wood and I just don't want to run the risk of having a puddle of water sloshing around either. So it's going to need something to go through there which is what this tray is and then everywhere else up this side across the top and everything further back is going to be aluminium. Spoiler alert, no I didn't. I made all of this out of steel. It's actually been about a week and a half since I fitted these panels and I've put them on both sides and I've cleaned them up down the edges and they're looking really good. I actually used a mallet and I've uh, lifted this side out a little bit away from the frame so it's not completely parallel but it does sweep into that bulge we put in the top of the arch here just to cover the top of the tyre way way better. And the other thing I've been doing in the last week and a bit is working on the roof scoop and this has taken a lot of trial and error to try and make everything work right. The other thing that I've added onto the bottom of this that we didn't have before that somebody on one of the videos did point out was we needed a little drain on the bottom to come out. So on the bottom here, as you can see, there is a little spout which just drains any water that collects through the scoop into the bottom of there will drain out and I can put a little rubber hose on, run it down and it'll all be fine. Now the other thing that I've obviously added on is these two internal panels and they're not particularly neatly welded on right now but they don't need to be. These aren't going to be seen. There's going to be another skin that runs across the front and goes from there onto here. But with these two on we can now fold these in to join onto the firewall which I'm not actually going to do right now. I was thinking about joining in and doing all of the firewall with the window and everything else on this episode effectively when the roof went on. But having looked at it, it's really an engine out job to be able to get in close enough to do it right and to do it well. So I've got everything ready and I've changed the design slightly of how I was going to do it with this panel. But now it should all just work. Just work. So now we've got the roof on for what I hope is going to be the last time because I am about to weld this to the car. So if I have to take it off again, I've got some fairly big problems. Obviously we need to join the rear legs, the front legs and this plate on to continue the firewall around up here and it will be folded along this line forwards and then we'll build the window when we take the engine out and, and basically finish the top half of the firewall. But everything we need to do that without having to flip the car over and really dismantle it all over again is now in place so we can get it finished off. I guess this is now done. The roof is on, the roof line is in, and we kind of have a better idea how this car is going to look. I thought about filming putting all of these side pieces on, but actually it was so complicated to wrap it onto the car and clamp it and weld it and do everything else. I thought, you know what? People have seen me fold a piece of metal around and struggle with it enough so far this episode doing these pieces. So I just went for the reveal and this is what we've come up with. Honestly, there were points through this that I was really unhappy with it and I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. Um, adding these flaring out slightly a little bit further into the side was a fairly late addition to this plan. Um, I wasn't entirely sure, I wasn't entirely happy with uh, the vertical side that I had on it and I wasn't even sure that this was going to work because I didn't know how far out I was going to be able to bring it, whether or not I should come halfway across the uh, rear arch, whether I should have stayed a little bit further in, but I think I've got a nice happy balance here. This distance from the outside edge of the car to the inside of here is just a little bit wider than the front where the A pillar comes down for the windscreen. So I think it gives a nice little balance to it and it keeps a good wide rear arch look on the back of the car. 
And obviously there are a few more pieces we need to add. Clearly there's a canopy that needs to go over the engine, but even now that's going through some changes and ideas in my head because originally it was just going to come straight down the back to here. And now I'm actually wondering, looking at the side, whether or not a lower flatter deck might still look really, really good because we could get away with one. Everything is underneath these two body lines in the engine bay. So I need to do a little bit of playing around maybe in Photoshop and see what that might look like before I fully commit to doing one or the other. I've got all the parts to make it though, so we can get on with it fairly soon and that will probably be one of the next pieces that we do after finishing off the air intakes. So I know I said I was going to make the top and this side out of aluminium and I have no idea how I planned on doing that. As I said, it's been a couple of weeks since I did anything in this area or indeed on the car. And the reality is I don't remember how I was going to get a smooth transition from this piece here, this on the outside edge of the car, into this transition that goes into where the intercooler is. So without knowing how I was going to do that in aluminium and attach it in a clean and smooth manner, I didn't bother. I made this piece and this piece out of steel because it was far more convenient. Now everything that sits behind the intercooler is going to be aluminium. That's going to go through because we can just pop rivet that in place and then it's easy to remove if we need to get the intercooler out because you don't want to trap the intercooler in here forever. That would be really, really bad. Well, that brings us to the end of a pretty monumental episode of Pedalbox where we've ma finally managed to get some proper shape into the roof line of this car. I'm really, really glad that this is now on and we can start working on the back end. As I say, I still haven't fully decided how I'm going to do the back, but I think in the time between me recording the previous part and this, I think I am going to put a proper fast back side in rather than try and go and follow the line that we've created at the back here. I'm also really glad we've got an idea for the intercoolers, for the intakes that go on here. Now I need to replicate all of this metalwork onto the other side of the car because I didn't do it as I went along, matching side to side, just in case I had to cut all of this out because it didn't work. Still have no idea how I was going to do the side and the top here smoothly in aluminium. I'll just chalk that one up to the ages. I guess, but this needs copying over and there's a couple of the little bits that we need to add on to really finish off the bodywork that we've got. The back of the panel that comes all the way across here, that very far edge around the back where the uh, rear light cluster is, that needs to be rounded over. You can't have a, a sharp panel edge of, yeah, I mean, this is 0.9 mil uh, steel that we've made it out of and you have to have a two and a half mil radius on all of your panel edges for the SVA, which is why these are rolled over, these are rounded everything. So we need to do something for that. I think I'm just going to weld some rod all the way around the outside of it and use the radius of the, uh, the solid rod to give the panel a bit more strength but also give me that radius that I need. So we'll cover that in the next episode and so I don't bore you with installing some more drainage channels like I did on the top piece here. I'm also going to run them all the way down into the back of the car so that next time we can just get straight on with building the clamshell that goes over that and that's going to be really really exciting to do. So in the meantime if you haven't already subscribe to the channel do check out shop.pedalbox.show for all of our merch that's t-shirts hats we've also got hoodies and long sleeves and beanies getting ready for winter can't believe it's uh, september and we're already talking about winter that's really disappointing and also if you want to support us directly go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show you can support us from as little as a dollar a month and if you do on the five or ten dollar pledges you'll also get access to our discord server where we chat and i post a bunch of pictures about this and the other projects as we're going to get a little bit of a heads up. Plus, we're always kicking around to talk about your projects as well. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.